This is the all new X-Tool P2. At Melopine Lasers, we have been testing the P2 extensively and we have some exciting results to share. In this video, we'll take a deep dive into the performance of the X-Tool P2 and give you an honest assessment of its pros and cons. Plus, we'll compare the P2 with some of the other options so you can make an informed decision. As always, we pride ourselves in delivering quality content without any boring fluff. So sit back, relax and join us as we explore the X-Tool P2 in depth. Welcome to Melopine Lasers, let's get started. Before we start, let me tell you that the P2 was sent to us for testing and review by Xtool. However, I would also like to let you know that this is not a sponsored video and I'll be sharing my honest opinions. The Xtool P2 arrived in a well-packed box that weighed around 110 pounds. There were some dents on the outer box, but when I opened it, the machine was covered in foam packing that kept it safe. Once you unpack, this is what you get. Now, before we move into what I think about the machine, let me tell you that this is a pre-production variant, so some of the issues I mentioned might be cleared up in the production version. The P2 may resemble the laser box, but it's an entirely different machine. Let's dive in and explore what sets it apart. Starting with the build quality, the outer shell is made of strong ABS plastic with an acrylic window that blocks laser radiation and lets you see inside. While the plastic parts are thick and sturdy, it would have been nice to see some color variation. The door on the laser is of fine quality and stays open when lifted. When you remove the plastic covering, you will find an all-metal powder-coated chassis that's strong and heavy with no sign of warping. Moving on to the size of the machine, the P2 has a footprint of around 40 by 25 by 11 inches and weighs around 100 pounds. It can work on workpieces up to 2 feet on the x-axis and slightly over 1 foot on the y-axis. The workbed features powder-coated slats that can be rearranged to hold different workpieces with a maximum thickness of 25 mm. The tray below the slats collects cut pieces and debris making cleanup easy. If you need more Z-height, you can get the razor table or use some wooden blocks to raise the machine. The P2 also has a pass-through feature allowing you to slide materials under the machine to work on long pieces up to 2 feet in width. Additionally, Xtool offers an automatic pass-through accessory that works like a conveyor belt, feeding workpieces under the machine for continuous processing. Looking at the linear motion components, the X and Y axis are belt driven, giving the machine a maximum speed of 600 mm per second. The rollers and rails are made of steel for added durability. The Y axis uses one stepper motor with a timing shaft to drive both sides of the gantry, ensuring no racking occurs. The motorized Z axis has a maximum travel of 75 mm, which makes it perfect for engraving on curved surfaces with the autofocus feature. On the laser side of things, there is a 55 watt laser tube at the rear with three mirrors guiding the laser to the workpiece. The mirrors on my machine were not aligned but Xtool provided a video on how to do it which was really easy. Now let's look at some of the tests that we did. I tried cutting some 10mm thick pine and got a good edge finish at 70% power and 5mm per second speed. The next test was on acrylic. You can cut through acrylic like butter. The curve width is minimal and the optimum speed for 2mm thick clear acrylic was 10mm per second at 60% power. The edges had a good plain polished finish. I also tried different colors of acrylic and I got good results with all of those. I also tried cutting 10.8mm thick black acrylic which I made by gluing together 2mm sheets. The P2 was able to cut through it at 3mm per second and 100% power. I then tried engraving on clear acrylic and got a good result. It was done at 300mm per second speed and 20% power. The engraving had a good white appearance and I also cut out the shape to make a key chain. I also tried to score glass to break it and I got a good result. However, it was not as good as a glass cutter because I was not using the optimum settings. I just wanted to see if the P2 can do it. I tried it at 60% power and 10mm per second speed and applied some pressure to break the glass. With some fine tuning, this can definitely work. I then tried to engrave on the back of a mirror. I did one pass at 20% power and 200mm per second speed to remove the coating on the back 
And then I ran another pass at 50% power and 200mm per second speed to engrave the exposed glass. The result was really amazing. I'd also like to mention that I tried the same thing on Lightburn but didn't get the sharp edge finish that I got using XCS. But it might get fixed before launch. I also have the Xtool RA2 Pro so I wanted to engrave something cylindrical. I found the riser for Xtool D1 Pro as the victim for this test and engraved on it. The result seems pretty accurate, there is no shift or ghost engraving. The riser is made of anodized aluminum and the engraving came out with good contrast. So the next thing I did was to raise the P2 on some wood blocks, slide the Xtool D1 Pro into the P2 and engrave on the red anodized frame at 40% power and 100mm per second speed to get a beautiful engraving. If you're new to lasers, you should definitely sign up for our free 7-day course called Getting Started with Lasers. It covers all the fundamentals to help you get started. And if you're not new to lasers, you should still sign up because we'll be sending cool tips and tricks in your email every week after the 7-day course. I'll leave the link in the description below. Do sign up and you won't be disappointed. The P2 is a feature-packed machine and I'll review each one. First is this cool display on top that shows you the temperature of the water circulating through the laser tube the work progress, the connection option the machine is using and the status of the door lock. Speaking of which, there is a door interlock which is a bolt connected to an electromagnetic actuator that keeps the door locked when the machine is in operation. The doors remain locked for about 10 seconds after job completion to let the exhaust system extract all the fumes from the work area. That brings us to the exhaust. There is an exhaust fan with a 2.5 inch port on the rear side. They also give you an exhaust duct to vent the fumes. The exhaust fan is a powerful one with a 145 CFM flow that can do this or this. On the rear side, you'll see two ports. One is for connecting to the fire safety device from Xtool. The other is to connect the air line coming from the safety device to the P2. You connect the safety device to the P2 and when there is a fire, the fire suppression system pumps carbon dioxide gas into the work area through the port for air which opens up inside the work area to put out the fire. But this will only work if you get the fire suppression system, which is a separate purchase. On the right side of the machine, you'll find a large emergency stop switch and around the back, you have the power on off switch. On the left side of the machine, you have the Ethernet and Type-C USB port. You also have this button on the top with a ring light around it that glows in different colors according to the status of the machine. We also opened up the P2 to see what's inside. I highly recommend you to not do this as this can void your warranty. But I love opening machines up, so I did it anyway. The rear houses the CO2 tube and a radiator with three large fans that draw air from under and force it up through the radiators. The hot air then vents out through the grill on the rear panel. On the left side of the machine, you have the water pump and the water tank. For me, it took around 0.4 gallons of water to fill. I used distilled water with this. The left also houses the large main board with a huge processor that has its own cooling fan. On the right side of the machine, there is the power supply unit for the machine, the high voltage supply for the laser tube, an air assist pump and a filter to smoothen the input supply. The other features I noticed were, there is a flow sensor to check the flow of water to the tube, there is a water level sensor on the tank and a water temperature sensor. All of these are used to keep track of the condition of the laser tube which ensures that the tube is always operating under safe conditions. Talking about sensors, there is one to check whether the door is closed and there is another one on the bottom of the machine to detect whether the tray is in position. If the door is open or the tray is not positioned, the laser will not work. However, when you are using the riser table, the rotary engraving mode or the pass-through mode, this sensor is disabled. There are limit switches on the rear and left side of the work area. These are non-contact type switches and the controller also uses soft limits to prevent the gantry from crashing into the frames. Coming to the other features, there are two cameras on the P2 for capturing the image of the workpiece which can then be used to place your designs properly. I tried the positioning accuracy of the design by drawing a cross mark on wood and then I tried drawing a square keeping its corner on the center of the cross. The positioning was spot on. 
The X2 M1 had some positioning errors due to its frog eye lens, but the dual camera setup on the P2 solves all those woes and gives you a good positioning accuracy. Next, I drew a 10mm line on wood and measured the line I got, and it measured 10mm spot on. So I would say the designs made using this machine are going to be accurate. The cameras can also be used to capture a height map of the entire workpiece, which can then be used to engrave on workpieces with irregular surface like a bulb. Unfortunately, this feature would only be available post-launch, so I couldn't include it in this review. The other features include a built-in water cooling system and an inbuilt air assist. The air assist can supply air at approximately 2 to 22 psi pressures. There is an automatic pass-through feature that works with an accessory that acts like a conveyor feeder. You can use it to work on workpieces that are long. On XES, when you select this feature, it gives you a work area that's 3000 mm long. So I believe you can work on 3 meter long workpieces with this accessory. I will be using the P2 to test a variety of materials and make a ton of stuff. I will be bringing really informative videos on how to process different materials using a CO2 laser as I did with my diode lasers. So if you want to learn more about lasers and want to know how to process different materials using a laser, make sure you subscribe to our channel. Now, let's talk about the software. The P2 is compatible with Lightburn and the Xtool Creative Space software. If you want to use the full potential of the P2, you will have to stick with XCS. You can capture an image of your workpiece and place designs on them directly, but I would not say it's a perfect software. However, I have seen that XCS receives regular updates and the development team is working hard on adding features based on user feedback, so there is hope. Regarding the compatibility with Lightburn, I am not happy with it. Maybe it's because this is a pre-production variant and they might have made upgrades in the production variant making it easier to work with on Lightburn. You cannot use the camera capture feature yet on Lightburn and the autofocus does not work on Lightburn. The P2 is also compatible with RA2 Pro rotary accessory. I had one that I got for my D1 Pro. Unfortunately, you need a different type of connector to connect it to the P2. But that did not stop me. I improvised and managed to connect the RA2 Pro directly to the wires inside the connector. The RA2 Pro is a good one. I have a video on that. Coming to connection options, you can connect to P2 over Wi-Fi, Ethernet cable or the good old Type-C USB cable. All of these connection options have a good response. Of all the lasers I have used till now, the Wi-Fi connectivity on the P2 felt easy to set up and smooth to use. That pretty much covers all the features of the machine. Now let me discuss some areas for improvement. One thing that could be improved is the placement of the emergency stop switch which is located towards the back. It would be more convenient if it was placed closer to the front for easier access in case of an emergency. The next thing is there is no option to run jobs in manual mode. You cannot jog the machine or fire the laser manually. Personally, I am used to running jobs manually. Also, there is no framing option in XCS. Furthermore, if you are using Lightburn, you can perform framing, but there is no pointer on the laser to let you know where the laser is, as CO2 laser beams are not visible to the human eye. I think they should have included a laser pointer like the one that's there on the D1 Pro. It would have made framing a lot easier when using Lightburn. Most of my concerns about the machine are related to its software. However, XCS is an excellent option for beginners to learn and run jobs easily. I have observed frequent updates being rolled out for the software, so there is hope for improvements in the future. If you are a beginner, XCS is going to be perfect for you. You will be able to learn things quickly and run jobs easily. Furthermore, the P2 is compatible with RA2 Pro and the fire suppression kit from Xtool, but you will need a different connector to use them with the P2. It would have been ideal if the P2 had used a similar port to their other machines, but I got to know that Xtool will ship you a connector if you already have these accessories. All you need to do is drop an email to their support team. What I like about the machine is that it comes with lots of bells, whistles and accessory options. First is the build quality. I really like the design and how everything is placed inside the machine. They have included everything you need to use your laser within the machine itself. You have an internal water cooling system and a built-in air assist. So you don't have to buy a separate water chiller or air assist. The other thing is that you can get accessories to expand what you can do with the P2. You have the RA2 Pro for engraving on cylindrical pieces, an automatic feeder to engrave or cut really long work pieces and the riser table to engrave on tall work pieces. I also like the display on the P2. It shows you all the relevant information over here and also has a good animation for when the machine spools up a 
upon startup. Talking about support, Xtool does not have a phone number where you can call them. You'll have to email them. However, their support is improving each day and they were quite responsive to my queries. Moreover, you'll have a good community of Xtool laser users to help you out. Now, here comes the comparison. I have selected four machines for this. The Glowforge, the Great Cloud, Beambox Pro and the Omtech Polar. If you compare the price, it puts the P2 right up against Beambox Pro and the Glowforge Plus at around 5 grand. The Great Cloud and Omtech Polar cost around 2k less than the P2. If you look at the work area, you can accommodate a 2 feet wide workpiece on the P2, which is not possible on the others. Also with the pass through feature, you can engrave on long work pieces which you cannot do on the Glowforge and Beambox. The other major difference would be in the performance of the camera. The dual camera setup on the P2 gives a really good positioning accuracy. Regarding the warranty and life of the laser tube, the P2 has a 1 year warranty and the laser tube has 8000 hours on it. You can read all the differences in specifications from the table on the screen, but to put it in a nutshell, Xtool offers the feature packed design of low cost CO2 lasers with a quality similar to that of the expensive ones with a performance that's better than the expensive ones. The P2 also lets you engrave on irregular surfaces, tall objects and on long work pieces which really sets it apart from the others and greatly improves what you can do. Before we conclude, let me remind you that the version I got for testing is a pre-production version. So most of the issues I mentioned might have been rectified and would not be present in the launch version. The X2 P2 laser cutter is a great option for anyone looking for a CO2 laser with top-notch quality and plenty of features. It's particularly well suited for beginners and it's incredibly user-friendly and easy to learn. Plus it requires minimal assembly so you can get cutting and engraving in no time. While Lightburn users may need to wait for all the features to become available, the P2 still offers plenty of capabilities to help bring your designs to life. And for business owners looking for a reliable and efficient laser cutter to streamline their workflow, the P2 is a good choice. Ultimately, the decision to invest in a laser machine depends on your specific needs and goals. But if you're looking for a machine that combines quality, versatility and ease of use, the Xtool P2 laser cutter is definitely worth considering. I'll be trying to get discount codes or links for you guys for the Xtool P2. If I get those, I'll add them in the description box. So please check out the links in the description box below. I hope you found the information and insights valuable. If you did, please consider subscribing so you don't miss out on any future videos. As a laser enthusiast, I'm committed to bringing you the latest and greatest insights and tutorials on all things lasers. And with a little bit of help from our subscribers, we can build an amazing community of laser enthusiasts who share their knowledge and experiences with each other. If you want to stay in the know, learn new things and have some fun along the way, Make sure you hit that subscribe button and join us in this laser fill journey. And don't forget to leave a comment or drop me an email at mail at mellowpine.com if you have any questions or feedback. Thank you for tuning in. I look forward to seeing you in the next video.